it on? Are we good? Okay. All right, so as he said, uh, my name's Jeremy, and uh, today I'm going to talk to you about diet adherence. And you've heard a lot of information today, but if you don't leave here and apply it, what good does it do? Right, so that's what I'm going to talk to you about today. Just real quick, I, I'm going to move through this quickly, so I'm not trying to speed read, but uh, we do have a limited time in the room, and I'm a modern presenter, so I have my notes on my phone. I'm not checking Facebook, so when you see me looking at this, it's just my notes. That we know of. That we know of, yes. Yes. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, I started a YouTube channel a couple years ago, Fat Adapted Athlete, so you can kind of see my evolution from where I started. Um, thinking I needed to eat sticks of butter until I met Luis and Keto Gains crew, and realized that um, that's not really advantageous if I want to achieve the body composition. And over the course of the two years, I've lost 85 pounds. I'm not in my final form because Ken is my final form. Uh, that's that's my I'm goal. <laughs> What's that? But with hair, I'm going to keep the hair. Um, my wife has joined me, and together we've lost about 150-ish pounds. Um, along the way, um, came part of keto gains. We didn't really have a lot of expertise around endurance or running, and I kind of filled that out. So. Um, Became good friends with all these guys, and um, we spent our time, you know, coaching clients through boot camps and um, online, and just educating people about a ketogenic diet. So, as he said, two days ago was my two-year anniversary. Um, this is the longest I've ever stuck with a diet. You are what was the word you used? The um, quintessential athlete. Quintessential the quintessential non-athlete. I was the quintessential cereal dieter. I've tried probably every diet that's out there, and my wife would always roll her eyes when I was ready to start a new diet. I've been vegan, I've been fruitarian, I've been, uh, uh, if it fits your macros, I've tried just about everything, and really couldn't stick with anything, um, until I found the ketogenic diet. I want to talk to you guys about some things today that you need to hear, okay? We need to have a little chat, okay? We need to be honest with you guys about some things to help you succeed. First, a few statistics. So right now, 50% of Americans are either dieting to lose or maintain weight. So half the people you know. In 2012, we spent $65 billion on trying to lose weight. Gym memberships, products, um, diet foods, and so forth. 90% of people that diet regain the weight in one to two years. So think about that. Half the people you know are trying to diet and lose weight, they spend a lot of money doing it, and most of them are going to regain it all back. Now, we use the word diet, and I just want to reclaim that word diet. It, it has a negative connotation for a lot of people, and they say, well, I'm not doing a diet, I'm making a lifestyle change. Well, the word diet comes from the word dietia, which means a way of life. So a diet is a way of life that you adopt. We tend to have a negative connotation and think of it as a short-term thing because Nobody can stick with one, and that's why we have a negative connotation about diet. But a diet really is a way of life. So I'm going to freely say the word diet, and when I say diet, I mean that in the full sense of the word of completely adopting um, a diet. So there were two studies, Dassinger et al. in 2005, and they found that across several different diets, people did have results, but it was the people who adhered to the program. Those are the ones that made the best results, no matter what diet it was. Um, now, we, we believe there's a lot of science on why a ketogenic diet is better. It doesn't mean there's better diets. Um, and then in 2012, there was another study, and they found that the biggest predictor of who was going to gain the most weight or what percentage you would gain was how well you adhere to the diet while you were on the program. That's the predictor of your success. Okay. So why can't people stick with a diet? Why can't we do it? Why couldn't I stick with any of my diets? The reason is there's two sides of dieting. We can give you all the education in the world, and there's no shortage of information, right? We have the information highway. We have the Internet. There's a ton of information. You see infomercials every day with thousands of products to help you lose weight and, and gimmicks and so forth, right? So why can't we do it? And I believe that there's two sides of dieting. There's the physical side, and that's what you've heard from these guys, what to eat how much to eat, when to eat, and why. The other side of dieting, though, it's mental. And most people don't go into a diet with a good mentality. We don't take time to get our mind right. And if your mind's not right, you're not going to succeed. 
So that's what I want to talk to you guys today is getting your mind right. Whether you just started, whether you've been doing this for a year, maybe you plateaued and you have new goals, it's time, as Arnold says, it's time to get serious, okay? <laughs> um, there's five behaviors. As we've been coaching, we've coached hundreds and hundreds, maybe thousands, I, Luis knows the number, um, on keto gains through boot camps, through private coaching. All the admins have done coaching. We really, we coach people on an everyday basis on the, on the forums and so forth. These are five behaviors that we teach our clients to adopt to succeed. People that come to the boot camps, they, some of these people have made some really amazing transformation. How do they do it? They adhere to the diet. The science is already there. We know if you follow the macros we give you, you will achieve the results. We know because we've done it and are in the process of doing it. So this is what we teach people. Five behaviors that you need to change. First is your motivation. And we're gonna talk about each of these. Second is your mindset. <clears throat> Third is manage your environment. Fourth is monitor. And then fifth is maintain accountability. For some reason I put hear no evil, see no evil, do no evil. You know, I don't see what I'm doing right now. <clears throat> Not accountable. Uh, the first thing is motivation. So for me, uh, you know, I was the, the cereal dieter, always waffling, and I realized um, I had kind of moved up through management in sales, and I got that magic corporate card, and I could expense food. And we got married very young, food was scarce, so when I had this card, by God, I earned this card, and I was going to eat. And I literally still remember to this day some of the meals that I would take some of my, ma my managers out to, to dinner, and the volume of food that I consumed. Uh, yeah, it was a Michael diet. You know, Michael's bulking so he can do 3,000 calorie days. I was doing 3,000 calorie meals, <clears throat> and I ballooned up to 45% body fat. And finally, after being frustrated, you know, I wanted to be around to see my kids progress. My daughter's getting married at the end of the year. I want to be around for those events. So for some of you, maybe it's something else, but tying something that's really important to you on why you're doing this is crucial. So the other thing is consider the cost. You wouldn't open a restaurant without considering how much the supplies are gonna cost, how much the inventory is, right? And is this gonna be a profitable venture? The same thing when you approach a diet. Are you really ready to not eat bread? To not eat donuts that your coworkers bring to work? You know, are you ready to commit and wrap your mind around that. Consider the cost and realize, you know what? I was tired of being fat. I was just tired of being fat. And I finally wanted to change. And that was enough motivation for me. <clears throat> the other thing with motivation and making sure you have the right motivation is have specific goals. I want to be healthy. I want to lose weight. Well, what does that mean? When we give our client intake questionnaires, we ask them what? We ask, what are your goals? And we try to get as specific as possible. I want to, you know, my goal is 11% body fat. That's, it's a very specific goal. You know, I want to lose 13 pounds. If your goal is to lose 100 pounds in three months, it's probably not going to happen. We, we will tell you whether your goal is realistic or not. So that's the other part of it is, you know, we've all heard about the SMART goals. Specific, measurable, attainable. It has to be something that's reachable. Um, the other thing is pain or pleasure. People are motivated by two things. You're motivated by pain or you're motivated by pleasure. Um, you either want to move away from something or move to something. I was wanting to move away from being fat, but I had other reasons, and I, I didn't have time to get into it now, but <clears throat> I was starting to run ultra marathons, <clears throat> and the guy in the picture there you see, that was when I had already lost 35 pounds on the left. I was even bigger than that. But I was running 30, 40 miles a week, and I could not lose weight. That's a ridiculous amount of activity to not improve your body composition. I realized I had to wrap my my brain around diet. I wanted to become fat adaptive so I could run on body fat. So <clears throat> I had serious motivation to, you know, want to protect my state of ketosis so I managed to stay under my carbs. Um, so that was part of the pleasure. You know, I wanted to run and be successful at that. Public decorations. Typically, when you set a goal, you make a public decoration, and I'm kind of an idiot. I said, I'm doing this keto diet, and I was so convinced of the science, I started a YouTube channel and just started running my mouth. And I broke the first rule of keto, which is you don't talk about keto, okay? I think that's changing. I think ketogenic diet is becoming more 
sought after, more successful. But we still advise people the first rule of keto is don't talk about keto because what are all your friends going to say? You're going to die. You need carbs. You have to eat bread. Okay? So, Luis, you, you died like 12 years ago, by the way. Um, <laughs> uh, and then lastly, just commit. Okay? We have to remove science. Thank you. We have to take emotion out of dieting. You have to commit. You may not feel like going to the gym, but you have to go. You may not feel like eating the right foods, but you do it anyways. So part of motivation is you have to kind of remove some emotion. You're not always going to feel motivated, but you have to do it anyway. So take emotion out of it and almost like autopilot, like I have to do this. For me, I had to do it because if not, I would crash during a race. I had to be fat adapted. <clears throat> okay, so first... Get your motivation right and make sure you have the right motivation and you're truly motivated to do this. The second thing is your mindset. You have to change your relationship with food. Luis and I were talking about this today. We have people get on the forums and they're like, well, first question is, when, when will I be able to eat pizza again? Okay, you are already right here that you need to fix this. Before, and and that's, we can pretty much predict who's going to succeed and who's not by how sometimes how they describe food. Oh, this delicious, greasy, you know, a scrumptious, you know, uh, food. Okay, if you're describing food that way, you might have a wrong relationship with food. <clears throat> okay? Yeah, mama needs wine. Okay, there, there's two sides of the biggest battle with diet is hunger. That's the biggest enemy is, is hunger. Okay? Um, there's two sides of hunger, though. There's physical hunger and then there's mental hunger. And I can tell you that most of it is mental. Now there's some things we can, practical tips we can give you for physical hunger. <clears throat> you were mentioning earlier, you know, about meal timing and so forth. One of the things we recommend to our clients is establish regular meal times. We know that life happens and things get in the way, but pretty much at one o'clock every day, I eat lunch. And just like Luis was saying, that's when my internal alarm clock goes off, hey, it's time to eat, okay? But I fast, uh, you know, pretty much um, 16 hours until then. Okay, and then that's when I get hungry because I've established it. It's started to regulate my hunger. Mm -hmm. So my coworkers, they're dying if they get to work and they haven't had a bagel, I'm fine. Salt the shop, I'm good. Or my bouillon cubes, those mm -hmm. watch on Snapchat. Um, <clears throat> consider intermittent fasting. You know, a lot of, uh, one of the complaints we get from people is, oh, keto's too expensive. You know, it takes too much time. Well, hey, eat less meals. Eat two meals a day. Since Malcolm's been staying with me the last week, we eat one giant meal a day, you know, and guess what? There's less preparation. Uh, it's easy. It's done. We've got our calories for day. We're good to go. Okay. We have to change our mindset. What is food? Is it for pleasure? It's fuel. So we have to change our relationship with food. That sounds easier. It's easier said than done, but it can be done. Um, eat higher volume by eating lower calorie foods. Every day, pretty much, I have a Willie's salad. It's a giant salad with steak on it, a little bit of sour cream, and a little bit of cheese. It's only about 400 calories, but it keeps me full. I go train about 6, get home about 8.30, and guess what? I've stacked all my calories to the end of the day. Very little chance that I'm going to overeat because I put all that towards the end of the day. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so eating more calorie-dense foods. Uh, Lewis was talking about earlier, would you rather drink a protein shake or would you ra rather eat three chicken breasts? Mm -hmm. Even on a really low calorie day, I can get a lot of food in. Three big chicken breasts, a whole big bag of broccoli, that's a lot of food to eat. Mm -hmm. And do that again for a second meal and you're still at like a thousand calories. So eating more um, lower calorie, uh, high volume foods. Okay, so that's the physical side. That's fairly easy to kind of manipulate. The hard part is the mental hunger. A lot of times, you think you're hungry, but you're not. We have using food as a reward. How many of y'all do that or have done that? <laughs> By gosh, I deserve this giant blizzard from Dairy Queen that's 1,200 calories. I earn this, right? You're not a dog. I give my dogs treats when they go outside and use the bathroom. You're not a dog. So don't use food as a reward system. There's other things you can do. When you've had great success, go buy a new pair of jeans. Go buy you a new outfit. You know, there's other ways you can use reward systems, but don't use food as a reward. Okay? These are behaviors that we learn. We teach ourselves these behaviors. 
that when something, you know, something bad happened to the office, I'm going to go eat this. Something great happened to the office, mm -hmm. I'm going to go eat this because I deserve it, right? So stop using food as a reward. <clears throat> Emotional eaters, people have, go through something really bad, they go and binge. So what Luis and I have them do is write down all the calories that they ate. Because a lot of times they don't want to track those. And when they're faced with the reality, yeah, they know they had a pack of donuts, but when they realize maybe it was 4,000 calories that they ate, it's a big deterrent for the next time they feel like binging, when they know they have goals. Because we think, oh, I over overate a little bit. No, you overate like a month of deficit that you could die <laughs> You died this whole month, and then you went and ate 4,000 calories, right? So <clears throat> emotional eating, boredom. Sometimes you eat just because you're bored. Mm -hmm. This is me. You go see what's in the fridge. Mm -hmm. I used to do it all the time. 10 times a day, I go to the fridge, just see what's in there. <laughs> I checked it 30 minutes ago. <laughs> Nothing's changed. But we're bored, right? That's why I don't eat food when I'm wa if I'm watching TV. I don't eat food because you're just mindlessly eating, mm -hmm. right? So boredom. The other thing is associations that we have. Oh, mm -hmm. I always have a beer with the game. Mm -hmm. We go to the movies, I have to have popcorn. You have to reprogram your behaviors. You have to learn new behaviors. And that takes effort. You just have to be intentional about it. And that's the main thing with dieting is you have to be intentional. Everything you do, everything we do is on purpose. Everything we eat is on purpose. We don't just you know, go have a Snickers at the gas station. Um, again, variety. I have friends that tell me, oh, well, I have to have variety. You know, one of the best ways to be successful is eat the same things over and over. Some people think they can't do that. I can eat, I mean, I eat a Willie salad like five days a week, mm -hmm. and it never gets old. Because why? I already know the macros. Yes. <clears throat> Like Louise said, you don't really even have to track. I mean, we, we tell our clients to track, but theoretically, if you're eating the same thing, you already track. You already track. Mm -hmm. You have six or seven meals that you can kind of rotate <coughs> in. Winner, winner, winter, chicken dinner. Okay? <laughs> so remove emotion from food. Realize that when you're doing things and you're associating emotions with food, you have to cut that out. Remove emotion. Food is just fuel, and that's it. It's energy. Okay? <coughs> Last, or not last, next is manage your environment. And this is where we say you need to take control of your environment and you need to take some accountability. You know, well, I couldn't help it that this happened or I couldn't help that that happened. No, you can help it. Nobody made you pick up the phone and call Domino's. <laughs> you didn't, okay? So you have to manage your environment. There are things you can do. You know, if I go to work and there's always people bringing in food from vendors and so forth. But guess what, there's two doors I can come in to work. I can avoid that door and kind of manage my environment and not put myself in a situation where I'm walking past the temptation all the time, okay? There are little things you can do. If you're going to the family picnic or whatever, and there's not gonna be keto food, guess what, eat before you go. Nobody made you show up and eat fried chicken. <laughs> you chose to do that, okay? So there are things you can do to manage your environment and make better choices. You know, um, we even grabbed a meal at the gas station the other day. You know, we were, we, we were done training, it was midnight, you know, we had some more calories. Well, we stopped, got some uh, hot pickles, you know, and that rounded out our electrolytes and, and what we needed. Know your triggers. I can't have a donut, because one donut is definitely gonna lead to 10 donuts, <laughs> okay? And some of you, you can't eat, oh, I, can you make one pizza fit your macros? If you have a higher carb tolerance, maybe. But will you eat just one pizza? Probably not. At least not for me. So know what your triggers are and avoid those things. If you, peanuts. Peanuts are keto, right? They're, they're keto friendly. If you eat like 10. <laughs> but how, yeah, the honey rosa, you got me there. You know, I love peanuts. The problem is. You have two honey rosa. Yeah, the, the problem is I can't eat just a handful. I have to eat more. So know what your trigger for, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Get the funnel there. So know what your <laughs> triggers are and manage them. Avoid, avoid your trigger food. Okay. Um, manage your thought input is just um, what you think about. You know, don't sit there and think about food all day. Distract. You know, stay busy. Distract yourself, especially when you're dieting and you're on a low calorie. Uh, maybe have a, a low calorie day during the week. 
you know, stay busy. Don't be thinking about that. The other thing I did when I was doing this is I spent time on ketogenic forums and mm -hmm. uh, on the Keto Gains group. It kept me motivated. Mm -hmm. You know, kept me engaged and focused and like, yeah, I'm going to do this. But so, avoid the, the groups that just post uh, fat bombs and so <laughs> Yes. <laughs> notice, I said, notice I said Keto Gains. Okay. The next thing we teach our clients is you have to monitor. Yes, you're not going to get exact your macros, but you don't know what you don't know until you know it. <coughs> I have a coworker who um, he's overweight, and but he says I don't overeat. I said okay, I put him on a ketogenic diet. The guy is dropping weight like a rock. But you know what he does? He tracks his stuff every single day faithfully for the last I think eight to ten weeks, and he is amazed at how much is in food. Mm -hmm. He didn't realize the content of some of the foods he was eating. He felt like he was eating a regular meal. But there's information you're lacking. So um, the quote that, uh, did you fix the quote there? Um, you can't, you can't uh, improve what you don't measure. I may have misquoted that. Um, the three things we want you to monitor, your measurements. Because when you're doing a body recomposition and you're lifting for strength, Hey, I didn't lose any weight in two weeks, but I lost five inches on my waist. Well, you're making progress, right? It's just not all weight loss isn't linear. So we want you to monitor your measurements. The second thing is your macros. Uh, you know, so you're like, oh, it's too long to track. I know I gotta close up here, Tim. Uh, you know, it takes too long to track. If you eat the same foods, it takes two minutes to track. You know, and even if you don't, 15 minutes at the most. My Fitness Pal is an amazing application. Okay, it doesn't take that long. You spend more time browsing Facebook. <laughs> you can take 15 minutes to log your food for the day. I tell, we tell our clients, log it first for the next day so you know it's going to fit. Not, oh man, I ended up 30 grams of protein short. How? If you planned, if you did it the night before, <laughs> then you end up short. All you got to do is follow what you put in the day before. Okay? Um, hey, if it takes too long to prep meals, eat one meal a day. Uh, lastly, track your movements. Just like in sports, if you want to improve your running time, if you're a marathoner, or if you want to lift, you know, improve your lifts, your strength, building muscle is progressive overload. So you need to track where you are so you can make progress. Do you have to track forever? No. Some people are like, well, I don't want to track. I just, I don't want to do that. You know, I want to <laughs> eat intuitively. Mm -hmm. Well, I eat intuitively up to 245 pounds. Yeah, exactly. okay. My intuition obviously was a little off. <laughs> As is most people's. Okay? So we, the, you know the old saying, if you uh, fail to plan, you plan to fail. Okay? Maintain accountability. This is where we say take responsibility for your actions. Nobody makes you do what you do. You are not where you are because anybody did anything to you. You made the choices you made to be wherever you are. And the only way to change that is to take accountability and make new actions. Learn new behaviors and apply these skills that we talked about. Um, get involved in a community. You know, if, if when I started keto, I love my family, but they had freaking donuts on the counter every day my first week of keto, mm -hmm. you know? I had to do it in the face of that. And luckily, I, I had keto gains and some other, you know, people that could kind of encourage me along the way. Now my wife has joined. My daughter's starting keto. My sister-in-law is doing keto. <coughs> so, but if you don't have that, surround yourself by people who do. And that's why we love keto gains. It's a great community. You get that support. The other thing for accountability is, you know, coaching and boot camps. It might be a family member. It might be a friend, it might be a gym buddy who, who can work out with you, somebody that can hold you accountable. If not, we definitely provide that on Keto Games. We have people doing boot camps and you get into a private Facebook group, one-on-one um, -on -one coaching as well. And we, we provide the macros. All you have to do is this right here. Just apply it and do the work, okay? So that's pretty much all I have is hopefully helping you guys get your mind right before you approach starting a keto diet or trying to reach your goals and be successful. If you don't do this, everything else we told you means nothing. That's all I have. We are going to... Thank you.